Hey guys, thanks for uh, tuning in today. Um, a lot of times you see my, on my older videos that I'm doing a whole lot of explaining what equipment is and what it does. Uh, occasionally I actually get out in the field and I'm able to help the guys. And yesterday uh, I went out and helped some of my guys install a fireplace. Uh, it was a new construction house. We didn't get the heating and cooling on this job, but we got the fireplace. So of course, naturally, I'm gonna go downstairs and check out how the other company who got the job did. And I saw something that drives me crazy on new construction house. And in my opinion, this is what quality is all about. Um, actually, it's a picture. I'll post the picture up right now. And as you see that it is a duct reducer that is basically taped on and that drives me crazy. So today, I'm gonna to take you down to my shop and I'm gonna show you how to build a proper duct reducer or a duct transition. Let's go get started. All right guys, today, some of the tools that we're gonna to need here, we're going to, or materials we're gonna need is the flat piece of iron, sheet metal. Tools we're gonna to need are a scale rule, scratch all, a scribe, tin snips, V notchers, and a break. Um, I have a slitter here that's going to be cutting my material down, but you can do those with tin, or you can cut your material down with tin snips as well. So step one, now that we have our material down, we need to cut it so my the duct reducer is actually 12 inches long, and we're going to do that by throwing it through the slitter. So set it here to 12 inches, tighten her up, let's run her through. So this transition is going to be two separate pieces. So let's get started on the first one. First one, I'm going to set my scratch all to a quarter inch and I'm going to mark it all the way across it. So like I said, this is 12 inches wide. Then I'm going to take my scratch all and then I'm going to come in from the edge. If we want to do all of our math, it'd be 12 and a quarter inches in. So I mark it at 12 and a quarter, make a scratch. Then most ductwork is eight inches tall. So I'm gonna come in to 20 and a quarter, make another mark. Then I'm gonna go in 12 more inches from that mark, which will be 32 and a quarter, make another mark, and then come in and out another quarter of an inch, so 32 and a half. make my last mark. Coming up to the top side here, you wanna to go to your eight inch marks. So what were those again? It was 12 and a quarter and 20 and a quarter. So you wanna come up to the top end, go to 20 and a quarter, make another scratch, go back down, 12 and a quarter, make another scratch. Come across here, and we're going to connect those two lines. Come across. Coming across. So now, these are our center marks. So because now we're at 12 inches down here, 12 inches, we want to make our 10 inch marks up here. So we do come up here. Line it up with the line at 10 inches, go 10 inch, and then we want to do 10 and a quarter also. So 10 and a quarter, scratch. And then the same thing down here to the other side. So we'll come up to 10 inches, right here, 10, and then 10 and a quarter. Now what we want to do is we want to take our scratch all, I'm mean, sorry, my scribe, and I'm going to make it for one inch. So this is the inch in which it's going to be going into the S cleat of the ductwork. And we want to scr scratch it all, all the way down, all the way through. 
and we want to do it on the other side as well. So I'll turn this around here, come down here, all the way down. So now that those marks are made, I want to take my 10 inch mark, so where that one inch comes across to my 10 inch, put my scratch all there, and then go down here to my quarter inch mark, scrape it, go out a quarter, and go like that. So that quarter inch line is going to be my cut line that I'm going to use with my, with my snips, my 10 snips. Do the same thing back here, line the dots up, quarter inch, quarter inch, and there we go. So in case this is hard to see, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark it out with a marker so you guys have a better idea of what I just did. So now that I have this all marked up now, uh, you can either take your 10 snips and cut off the access, access sheet metal. I'm just going to take it over the shear because it's a whole lot bigger. Straighten it out. Make my cut. Bring her back over here. So now it's a more manageable, manageable piece. So now I grab my V notchers and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to or notch each joint that's actually going to have a break in the metal. So. Notch my quarter inch one first. I have to take that burr off. Like that. Take my two middle pieces. Notched. Notched. Turn it around. To my 10 inch pieces, notch that, notch this corner, then I'm going to grab my 10 snips and I'm going to cut off this access piece here. To the other side. And then take the burr out. And that is our template. So now all we're going to be doing is we're going to be bending these quarter inches up and then bending up these two pieces right here. So let's take it on over the break and we'll get it broken up. <clears throat> now we're at the break. So I'm going to open this thing up. And I'm going to bend my quarter inch pieces up first. So go ahead and line it all up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it up at a 90 degree angle. So bend it on up to that point. do the other side the same way, quarter inch. So you're going to do your quarter inch pieces first. Make sure they line up with your marks because these are going to be fitting into a Pittsburgh so the last thing you want them to do is be too long and not be able to fit and look wonky. So I got my two quarter inches done so now I'm going to do my long pieces here. Bend those to a 90 degree angle. And then my second piece here. Line up the two V's. 90 degree angle. And just like that, piece number one is complete. Now, we're going to be going over and we're going to be getting a measurement 
from the quarter, that quarter inch mark on how long that is. Because it's at an angle, it's actually gonna be longer than 12 inches. So uh, let's go over there and get that piece started. So now that I put my scale rule down, it looks like from that point to this point here, we're looking at just a, right around 10 and an eighth. So our piece is gonna be, actually it's gonna be 12 and an eighth because we're gonna add one inch that we're gonna be building up because we're gonna be breaking those for a drive as well. So our cut piece is gonna be 12 and an eighth and our Pittsburgh portion of that piece will be 10 and an eighth. All right guys, so now we're ready to uh, make our second piece. Uh, this is the scrap piece that we cut off here. Um, so our dimensions for that second piece is going to be 10 inches wide by 12 and an eighth long. Um, so uh, the reason why it's 10 inches wide is because we're gonna be running it through Pittsburgh and that requires one inch. And because the ductwork is eight inches tall, we need to add one inch to each side, equaling 10. So let me go ahead over here and cut this down real quick. So now we're 10 inches wide. I'm gonna go grab my scale rule and we are going 12 and an eighth long. Make a mark. Come back over to the shear. Cut this down. So here's our piece. Now, grab our scribe, put it down to one inch, and we're going to mark all four corners. Just one inch. Then, grab our V-notchers and then notch all the corners. Just point the tip at the... If you have a one inch V-notchers, this is super easy. I mean, you do not need the V-notchers. You can do this with your snips if you wanted to do that that way too. There's no real science behind it. You just want to do it at an angle like that. So whether you want to do it with V-notchers, snips, it doesn't matter. This is a lot easier just to with this one here. So now we're going to take this piece over to the Pittsburgh machine. All right, so now we're ready to use this Pittsburgh machine. Uh, on small pieces, it's very easy to kind of get confused on which side you're supposed to do. So always measure twice, cut once type thing. So uh, like I said, over here, we're, we're doing the, the, eight, the 10 inch side is what we're Pittsburgh. Let's turn her on and run her through. And then run the other side. So basically what this is doing is creating that S look. So our quarter inch is actually gonna fit inside that groove, and then we're gonna bend this over to hold that piece in. So let's go do that. Or first, we're now let's go to the brake so we can make our um, brakes for those, what we're gonna be bending over for drive cleats. All right, so now I'm gonna put these to the brake, and all we're gonna be doing is building, or uh, bending this about I don't know, not quite a 45 degree angle, but a little less, maybe 30 degrees. I'm not sure. But anyway, go ahead and line it up. Make sure that you don't pinch the Pittsburgh shut and just give it a little bend. Just a little nudge like that. Now we want to do it opposite. So we want this one to bend that direction there. So come over here. Lay it down. Give her a little nudge. There we go. So now, ready to put this thing together. So now, we got our two pieces here together. We got this piece and this piece here. So, turn it on its side, and as you can see, see how these kind of match up with one another? That's what we're gonna do. 
So we're going to go ahead and put that quarter inch into the Pittsburgh. You should be able to slide it in fairly easy. Give it a little, a little tap if it doesn't fit in. Make sure that these are flush, these two edges. And then give her a nice, nice little tap over on that side. Nice little tap on that side. Go ahead and turn it around. Put it back in. Do the same thing. turn your hammer to the side and hit it in the rest of the way there. Might be a little bit quicker. This is the this is the loud part of the job. Why I like doing that with the edge of the hammer is you don't have so many dimple marks in it. It's a bigger bigger hit. see I hit it with the edge of the hammer and you can kind of see the the dimple marks yeah you can get those out but it's kind of a pain in the butt compared to doing it with the edge and having a more nicer even it's, it's the details but you're going this far you might as well do it all right right so it also it creates you know you want it to be a tight duct Next step, if you want, you can do this out in the field or you can do this in, uh, in the shop while you have it here. But grab a drive bar, go ahead, put it in to help the installers out. These edges are a little bent here, so I'm going to grab my hand brakes, flatten it out a little bit. Put my drive bar in. it over, push it in, do this edge, and then turn her over and do the other side. There you have it, a nicely good looking built transition. Uh, if you watch this video, you now have no excuse to be putting those pieces in and tape, duct taping it together. That looks awful. This looks like it's a high quality product and this is something that you can show the homeowner when you're there and you can brag about, I built this piece by hand and put it into your house. If you like this stuff, if you, if you like this video, please go ahead and push subscribe. And uh, if you want to see anything else built, any other kinds of transitions, uh, just go ahead and put it in the comments below. And then uh, we'll see you next time.